Okay, here we go. A lot has happened since I last saw you a couple of weeks ago. I've driven over 1,500 miles across the country. I filmed a reality TV show. I met new friends connected with old ones. And to be honest, saying yes to all of these unexpected opportunities that have come into my life has really gotten me so excited about the potential of where my life is headed. But since I can't share a whole lot about what happened on the reality TV show because it hasn't aired yet, I thought as I jump back into the normalcy of my life, maybe you and I could just have a sit down chat and I could get a couple of things off my chest and answer some of the questions that you guys have for me. So let's settle in. An afternoon cold front has just rolled in and it's all of a sudden so cozy and chilly. I've missed you and frankly I'm not the same person I was two weeks ago. So much has happened. Instead of making a usual video, I think it's time to make a video that I've been putting off. I also think it's time to come clean about a few things and answer a few of your questions. So. I'm going to finish making coffee and then I say we cozy up back in bed and get to chatting. All right. So I get a handful of regular questions on most of my videos in the comment section. So I'll be addressing those. And I also put the question sticker on Instagram and you guys came with the questions. So I think I'm just going to go straight for the big ones. How do I afford this lifestyle? Finances. Am I single? Who am I dating? Do I believe in God? Uh, what is my biggest fear? Do I ever plan to get off the road? I thought, why not just get right to the good stuff? So grab yourself a cup of whatever. Let's cozy up. and I'm just going to get right to it. So a quick intro into just who I am, because I know there's a lot of new faces around here, and heck, if we're going to be spending all this time together, we should probably get to know each other. My name is Alyssa. This is Rio. And I have been living in a bus for over five years, and I've been living on the road full-time for over three. My nickname that I have been getting since growing up has been Liss, hence regret Liss. You know, clever. Grew up mostly in New England. I moved around a lot growing up especially schools. So there's not one place in particular that really feels like home to me. And I think that's part of my bus life journey is to find home. So, all right, now that we got that, oh, oh, we should do like a little, uh, tell me, tell me something that most people don't know about you in the comments or your favorite food or something. Go ahead and do that now. Just so that I can get to know you guys too. So, okay, now let's get into the good stuff. Let's talk about money. Currently, I support myself in this lifestyle completely through YouTube, and that has been a pretty recent development. There are so many ways to support yourself while being a nomad. I used to have my own small business where I was a marketing consultant. I have so many friends living on the road that have such a variety of ways they make money. Accountants, sales reps, marketers, harvesters. So there's a lot of short term or seasonal jobs that you can get and you just go from one seasonal job to the next and you can support yourself that way. You shouldn't be afraid of being able to support yourself if that's the one thing that's holding you back from getting on the road because there's a lot of options. You might not be able to keep your current job, but know that there are a lot of options out there. And if living on the road is something you really want to do, it's worth taking a risk and just trying out a career change. You might find something that you end up really, really loving and finding purpose in. Another big one that I get a lot is about safety as a solo female living full-time on the road. So there are four main components to my safety routine that make me feel confident living this lifestyle. 
The first, and this is not sponsored, I have a Eufy wireless doorbell. So it's just a doorbell that is mounted to the outside of my bus and it is going 24 seven and I have a live stream cam on my phone at all times and I can give this live stream to anyone else if I want to. Um, it's really great to just monitor the bus when I'm away. It also records any activity and it gives me notifications. So I'll just get a notification on my phone, human outside, and it'll show me or animal outside, whatever, I can customize it. So that gives me a lot of confidence. The second is to have weapons that I feel very confident and capable in using. I think a lot of people get too caught up in the type of weapon that they feel like they should have when they're really not choosing the weapons that they feel most confident just grabbing and using right away. And that can be different for anybody because you never want to have a weapon in your household that could more than likely be used against you because you hesitate. So we're not gonna get into the GUN conversation here. That's not for this video, folks. But my point is use the weapons that you feel confident using, that you are familiar with and practice. Practice grabbing for them, practice using them, place them where you know you can just instinctually grab them. Yeah, do that. Third is intuition. Just always trust your intuition. I have moved campsites uh, quite a few times where I just arrive in a place and for some reason or another, I don't feel comfortable. You know, the little tingly on the back of my neck starts happening and I just move. So your intuition is more powerful and more aware than you think. So just trust it. Oh, and my fourth one is a dog. Rio is very protective and she often takes night watch. So in the afternoon, kind of like what she was just about to do, she'll take a long afternoon nap. And then at nighttime, she'll just sit at the foot of the bed right here and look out the window. And she has notified me there have been two occasions where between two and 3 a.m. there have been two strange men approaching the bus because I don't know, they were curious or whatnot and she scared them right away. So she is awesome because she can hear things that I don't. She's aware of things that I'm not aware of. So I definitely recommend traveling with a dog. It does have its limitations, but for me, it is absolutely worth it. Humry, yes, yes, you're absolutely worth it. I love you. Look at how stinking cute she is. You, how are you real? How are you real? Oh, there were a few questions about Rio, so I'll just jump into that right now. I adopted Rio from a rescue group in Texas. Rio was a street dog in Houston. She was found completely covered in mange. She had a broken hip, a broken pelvis, and she wasn't able to use her rear end. So she wasn't able to walk properly. And she would haul herself around just with her chest and with her front paws. And she also had a puppy. So Rio was a mama dog. And somehow, still with all of her injuries, she was able to find food and water for her and her puppy living on this street. So she was picked up off the street. She had a date to be euthanized. But thank goodness, someone at the rescue group believed in her. So they pulled her from the euthanasia list. And then she and I found each other. So I am just so so lucky to have her i get emotional just thinking about it this is this is my soul pup right here i've i've had dogs growing up and i've loved them to death but rio and i have a very special bond and we communicate and rely on each other in special ways you know out here living on the road we rely on each other for comfort and safety and companionship and we just have a really special bond and i love her so much i got her dna done uh, cause she's a street dog, so you never really know. But on her chart, she is a Husky German Shepherd Schnauzer Pitbull. What a wild mix. Honestly, I feel like there could be a little bit of coyote in this dog. Just the way that she moves when she's out and the hair and she's, she's got, a, she's wild. She's wild. She's got a little something, something going on, but she's the best and I absolutely love her. And I'm so glad that you guys love her too. All right, let's get into some of the more personal ones. Okay. Oh, let's address an internet rumor floating around right now. Let's address that first and then I'll get personal. So there's this really funny rumor floating 
that I am faking bus life. <laughs> and I would like to confess that I am far too lazy to be faking this lifestyle. I'm also not wealthy enough. I don't have a camera crew. When, when you see me in a video and it seems like someone else is perhaps holding the camera, it's just my tripod. <laughs> and my friends are not paid actors. That's a funny one. I don't understand why people would think I'm faking it. To start off the more personal questions, uh, I'm gonna answer this question that I get a lot and it is, do I get lonely? And the answer is yes, I definitely get lonely. I think loneliness can be a really powerful teacher. So I use it as a time to really reflect on, you know, who is it that I'm missing? What am I missing? And to recognize that quality of relationship is so important because the only thing that's worse than feeling lonely when you're alone is feeling lonely when you're surrounded by people. And this lifestyle has given me the most beautiful relationships of my life. I've met all of my closest friends living this lifestyle because I'm living in intention. So I end up meeting a lot of people who are living in similar intention or have similar passions. And I just feel so lucky to have the relationships that I do. All right, what is my biggest fear? I think my biggest fear is living a life where I feel numb or disconnected from the things that matter most to me. So I think my fear is to just waste my life worrying about all the wrong things. Okay, this is a good question. So what is something that brings me joy that is not available in my current lifestyle? If you guys have been watching my videos for a while, you know that I crave community. This whole bus life journey has been so empowering and completely changed my life. When I first set out in, in bus life, it was really about diving inward and figuring out who I was and navigating a lot of just inner demons or traumas, whatever you want to call it. And coming through on the other side, I truly have this deep appreciation and love for myself and for life. I feel like I have so much to offer and I have so much love to give. And the one thing that isn't available to me in my current lifestyle, I'm, I'm missing that connectedness. I think I'm craving roots, you know, being able to see the same people regularly, to learn how to garden. Of course, bus life, has a lot of goodbyes, you know? I, I'll see people regularly and I'll stay in touch, you know, I'll see them every few months or so, but it would be really awesome to see the people in places that I love more regularly. That leads into the next question, I guess, of do I ever see myself living off of the road or coming off of the road? And the answer is yes, but it's never been about the bus. The bus was the catalyst for me to totally transform my life, to pick up the pieces of my life, make something totally new, and to fall in love with myself and life again. And that's exactly what happened. I think I'll always have a bus in my life. My dream life in the future would be me having a home, a stationary home, a place that I can go back to, but also having a bus that I can take for a couple months at a time. Um, yeah, have both, you know, why not have it all? Would I ever live on the road with a spouse or with kids, even part-time? Yes. I would love to experience this kind of life with a, with my family. I think part-time would be again, the perfect balance, but yeah, I think that would be really special. Uh, what is my five year plan? The theme of my life right now is to listen to my intuition and go with it. My five-year plan, I would love to have property or a home base. I would love to be in love. I think if I know exactly what I'm gonna be doing in five years, I'm not creating enough space for self-development or for life to take a turn that could be better for me than what I'm already envisioning. 
who knows what that is? Who knows if it's off grid? Who knows if I'm homesteading? Who knows if I'm the mayor of a cute little town? Who knows? <laughs> Okay, we want to talk about relationship. It is mind boggling to me and I get a little shy that people are so interested in my love life. I have become a woman that I'm so proud of and I love who I am. I love who I am becoming. It's It feels so good to know that I'm reaching my potential and um, it also gets me really excited about my love life because um, I'm going to be able to show up to a partner in a really beautiful and powerful way that will hopefully foster a love that's, you know, good for the books, good for the fairy tale, good for the movie. You know what I mean? <laughs> and it also has allowed me to see what I really need or want in a partnership. I know that when I jump into a romantic love, that it's going to be not based in trauma needs, if that makes sense, but it's going to be out of pure love and intention, hopefully. You know, relationships are really powerful mirrors into yourself to realize where you need to grow. And I want that challenge for myself. I think a partner, it'd be such a beautiful thing. Um, but I think I'm diving into romance, um, in a way that's a little bit more private until I decide that there's a certain love that I want to share with you guys because I can really see it lasting longer term or our lives start to interconnect in a way that it would almost be dishonest if I didn't share it with you guys. Like I want to be able to experience love without the input of the internet and I, I want to do that dance by myself until it feels really right to share it with you guys. Also, I think it might be a little unfair to just start dating someone and then be like, oh, here's a hundred thousand other people that you're also kind of going to be dating and they're going to have their opinions, you know? So thank you all for respecting that. Just know that I'm really excited about the potential for my future love. And I'm excited to share that with you guys when it happens. I'm setting myself up for the opportunity for really beautiful and healthy love. And I hope that I am one of the lucky ones that gets to experience that. I don't know what it'll look like, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited. And it's very sweet that a lot of you are excited for me as well. On that note, there's also questions about my belief in marriage. Marriage, I think, can be a beautiful concept. But for me, I think I'm hesitant to marriage just because I want my partner to be with me, not ever out of obligation, especially legal obligation. And I never want them to ever feel trapped. I want them to always be here with me by choice. I think a commitment ceremony could be really beautiful. I think marriage can be really healthy and long lasting. And I think partnerships can last a lifetime. You know, there's a huge range of beautiful love and partnerships and their structures. I'm also a child of divorce. So does that make me tainted? I don't know. <laughs> I definitely see a long-term, maybe even lifetime partnership for me in my future. But again, I don't want to force these expectations or standards on a future love because that might taint it. I think just letting love develop naturally and really nurturing it in the present moment with that partner is the most important. The less expectations, I think the better. Love is a really wild thing. Why do we have to put it in all these boxes? You know, let's just experience it in its most, in its most pure form. I also get the question fairly often of what is my sexual orientation? And I have only ever dated men seriously and long term. I'm just naturally very drawn to the masculine. So I generally consider myself straight. I will never say never. Um, I think women have so much to offer. I've just never felt that depth and romantic connection with a woman so far in my life. So men right now. Let's just jump into a rapid fire, a few more lifestyle questions, and then I'm going to end with spilling a secret. Okay. 
How do I find campsites? iOverlander is my go-to. Freecampsites.net and Harvest Host is a good one too. Especially iOverlander. It's an app that you download and you can see all these pins across the country. It's also great for finding resources like water, propane, dump stations, trash, etc. At each location, there are reviews and photos. It's really great. It's the community helping each other out. People will say, careful of this, or, you know, don't drive when wet or four by four required. So it gives you an insight into what you're getting into, which is really helpful. I try to arrive to every campsite during the day because just to get a feel for the safety and just go with your gut. Again, if it feels a little off, just move on to the next one. There's always another campsite. Harvest Host, which is a paid, um, subscription, but you get access to all of these small businesses that let you camp. So a lot of wineries, things like that. Will I be posting a bus tour? Yes. <laughs> Guys, I haven't even done a tour of this bus. What the heck? I will do that. I'm going to, I'm going to find a friend to help me film it. So yes, bus tour coming soon. Do I get homesick? Yes, I do. And I say that with a smile because I've never felt like I had a place of my own to call home to miss. So me feeling homesick makes me realize that I am on my way to finding home because I'm homesick for a place that doesn't exist yet. So I can feel my soul searching for home. And that's just such a cool thing. Like I've just come so far in my life and uh, I'll be so excited. I don't know where or when, it's going to happen, but I'll be really excited to share that with you guys too. When I find a place to park for a little while, um, that'll be really cool. I hope you guys will be excited to continue this journey with me when I'm not full time on the road, whenever that happens. Uh, cause again, it's never been about the best for me. It's, it's been about so much more and it, reading your guys's comments every week when you guys share about your life and what you're going through it it makes everything worthwhile it's just the greatest honor of my life to share these videos with you and connect with you and um, i just love you guys so much i do thank you for being here i guess i'll just wrap it up with that oh i said i was gonna spill a secret here's a secret I have been looking for another dog. I just realized that Rio lights up when she has other doggy friends. So it would make my heart so happy to give her a sibling. I don't know if the time is right, but I have been secretly looking. So if the right dog comes along, um, maybe. Rio's gonna have a sibling in the future, for sure. It has been so much fun just chit-chatting with you guys. I know this video has been different, very raw and uncut. Let me know if you like it. Let me know if you want me to do another one of these questions videos. I love you guys. I hope you're well. I'm so glad to be back and I will see you next week. Guys, editing Alyssa here. I got so many questions from you that I couldn't even include them all in one video because it was getting so long. Like, like how much did I spend on the bus? What are my scariest moments living alone on the road? Do I believe in God? I want to know if this type of video is interesting for you guys. I feel a little vulnerable doing it because it's just so raw and uncut, but I really love just sitting down and having a chat with you. So let me know if you liked this video and maybe I'll do a uh, part two of answering your questions. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I love ya. I'll see you next week. Bye, Rio say bye. <laughs>